Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is the Galaxy S20, the new flagship phone from Samsung, and it's best yet for photography. It follows last year's S10, but Samsung's rebranded the series, so instead of S11, we're skipping straight to the S20. I had a brief chance to try it out at an official Samsung press event, and in this video, I'll show you what's new, concentrating on the camera side. As always, this is a first looks video that will be followed up by an in-depth review that I'll link to here when it's ready, so do look out for that along with sample images over at Cameralabs.com. Right, let's get on with it. Like previous generations, the S20 comes in several flavours, differentiated mostly by screen size, battery and camera specs. There's three models at launch, starting with the base S20, which has a 6.2 inch screen and 4000 mAh battery followed by the S20 Plus in the middle with a 6.7 inch screen and a 4,500 mAh battery, while the top end S20 Ultra model boasts a 6.9 inch screen and a 5,000 mAh battery. So all the screens and batteries are larger than the equivalent models in the previous S10 generation. All three screens also share the same Quad HD Plus resolution of the S10, well it was high enough wasn't it, with AMOLED panels and Infinitio styling, which is Samsung's way of saying pretty much the entire front surface is the display. They all support HDR10+, Plus, while the refresh rate has now been doubled to 120Hz and the touch sensitivity to 240Hz making them much more responsive for gaming. They also all support 5G as standard, although a slightly cheaper version of the S20 base model will be available in some regions with 4G at best. All three share the same 64-bit octa-core processor running up to 2.73 GHz and the base memory spec for the 5G models is 12 GB of RAM with 128 GB of storage, although the Plus and Ultra models will also be available in 512 GB versions and the Ultra with up to 16 GB of RAM. Meanwhile, all three have a micro SD slot that can support 1TB cards, but there's no analog headphone jack, it's USB-C only. SIM-free pricing is similar to the launch prices of the S10, so in the UK you're looking at £899 for the base S20, or £799 if you go for the 4G only version, £999 for the S20+, Plus, or £1,199 for the S20 Ultra. Obviously, there'll be cheaper deals if you go with a network contract. Right, now onto the cameras, which is what I'm really interested in, and apparently also the number one reason most people upgrade their phones. I'll start with the most affordable S20, which has a triple camera system now arranged in a vertical line. The main wide camera shoots at 12 megapixels with an f1.8 lens and optical stabilization. The 1.8 micrometer pixels here are a little bigger than the S10's main camera, but the lens is a bit dimmer. This is joined by an ultra wide angle camera capturing twice the field of view with 12 megapixels using an f2.2 lens. So it's a little lower resolution than the 16 megapixel ultra wide camera on the S10, but this in turn makes the 1.4 micrometer pixels fatter and more sensitive to light. Meanwhile, for longer shots, there's the telephoto camera that grabs 64 megapixel photos using an f2 lens with optical stabilization. The 0.8 micrometer pixels on this camera are smaller than the S10's telephoto camera, but there's a lot more of them and the lens is a bit brighter too. The key difference though is that the S20's telephoto camera now sports a 3x optical zoom, which thanks to the high resolution sensor behind it can work together to deliver a 30 times total digital range. Moving on, the S20 Plus with its bigger screen and battery has a quad camera system. This shares the same three cameras for imaging as the base S20, but adds a fourth depth vision camera for generating more realistic shallow depth of field or blurring effects. Meanwhile, the S20 and S20 Plus also share the same front facing camera built into the display, which takes 10 megapixel selfies using an f2.2 lens and a 1.22 micrometer pitch. So that's the same sensor specification as the S10's front camera, but with a slightly dimmer lens. The flagship S20 Ultra though is where things really start to get interesting, and the clue lies within the chunkier panel on the rear. First things first, the S20 Ultra shares the same ultra-wide camera as the S20 and S20 Plus, and also includes the depth vision camera of the Plus. The front-facing camera also has an f2.2 lens, but now shoots high-resolution selfies up to 40 megapixels. If you set it to shoot at a lower 10 megapixel resolution though, it will sport slightly fatter 1.4 micrometer pixels than the first two models, and this makes the sensor a little bit bigger and more sensitive to light. But the S20 Ultra does things very differently for its standard and telephoto cameras. 
The S20 Ultra's standard wide camera now sports a larger 1 over 1.33 inch sensor with an ambitious 108 megapixel resolution using an f1.8 lens with optical stabilization. The huge resolution here results in 0.8 micrometer pixels, but cunningly it can combine a 3x3 square of them into one extra fat pixel. This reduces the photo resolution to 12 megapixels, but increases the pixel size to a generous 2.4 micrometers. So the resolution would now match the earlier S10, but the pixels would actually boast three times the surface area, making them much more sensitive in low light. This is a really big deal for quality. But the S20 Ultra's telephoto camera raises the photography game even further, squeezing in a 10 times optical zoom using folded optics on their side. The resolution is 48 megapixels with 0.8 micrometer pixels. These can be downsized to 12 megapixels, making each pixel fatter at 1.6 micrometer, while the lens is f3.5 with optical stabilization. Gosh, there's a lot of specs to consume, isn't there? The Ultra's two new cameras by default operate at 12 megapixels in order to perform better in low light, but they use their extra pixels to deliver more reach with a digital zoom. Or if you like, you can force the main camera to just shoot at its full 108 megapixel resolution if preferred. I'd only really do that in decent light though. Sadly, Samsung wouldn't let me take the phones out at this top secret preview event, so instead I'm going to demonstrate the zoom on this potted plant on a table inside. So here's the S20 Ultra zoom range in action from 0.5 times, that's the ultra wide lens, all the way up to 100 times, sometimes using just one camera, sometimes using a mix of lenses and the wealth of pixels at its disposal. Notice how the longer zooms show you position in relation to a bigger image shown in a thumbnail in the corner, just so you don't really get lost. Now, unsurprisingly, the quality really does suffer at the longer ends, but if you keep your zooming more modest, say up to 10 times, you'll enjoy very respectable results and a range that's still very impressive for any phone. The final photos in playback can also look better than the live preview. As soon as I get a final production sample and I'm allowed to take it outdoors, I'll be posting sample images at cameralabs.com, so keep an eye open for those. Beyond a longer zoom range, the S20 models also aim to deliver better quality in low light with their bright night mode. First, here's a normal photo taken with the S20 Ultra, and now one taken with bright night mode that captures a burst of 30 images, some with high ISO, some with different exposures, and these are then all combined into an image that should deliver brighter details with better detail and low noise. Meanwhile, for photographers who can't decide how best to take a shot, the single take mode grabs a mix of stills and video while encouraging you to adjust the composition as you shoot, before then showing a bunch of different approaches to the same scene. You'll see wide shots, long shots, videos in forward and reverse, special effects and more, so there should be something that appeals or at least surprises. Like most modern phones, you can choose whether to record images in standard JPEG or HIF formats, the latter using more efficient compression to produce smaller file sizes. Alternatively, if you'd like to adjust your images later, recording in RAW will give you more flexibility. Now I'm confirming with Samsung about bit depths for the HIF and RAW modes, but I believe HIF is only used for smaller file sizes rather than for greater tonal range. All three Galaxy S20 phones can film 8K video at 24p, as well as 4K or 1080 video at 30 or 60p. Now I'd prefer there to be more frame rates available, especially 24 or 25p for 1080 and 4K, but let's not let that ruin the fact that the S20 phones can now actually film 8K video seemingly without compromise. There's no apparent crop or time limit beyond memory as far as I could see at the preview event. Yeah, this is it actually recording 8K and nothing appears to be melting so far. While you can cast 8K video to compatible Samsung TVs, most of us will use it for video grabbing frames at a considerable 33 megapixels. The S20's 8K video snap function is designed to do just that, and here you can see a frame grabbed from a promotional video and the detail it contains. Again, this isn't quite as spectacular on the potted plant. Samsung's also aware that shakiness spoils many videos, so it's improved its stabilization. I wanted to try it for vlogging, but again, I wasn't allowed to bring any files home from these early samples. So until I can do my own tests, here's one of Samsung's own demos showing it in action while the videographer was apparently running. I've put the unstabilized footage on the left and the stabilized version on the right. It's pretty impressive stuff, but again, I really want to test all of this myself before casting judgment. What's definitely welcome though is the addition of a pro mode for video that unlocks full exposure control for movies and it's also possible to film in high resolutions and down convert them if you desired.
Since 8K is only available in 24p, this hopefully should allow you to generate low resolution 4K or 1080 versions that are also in 24p, but again, I'll need to test this for my final review. And that's about all I can say for now, based on my brief time with the phone. The Galaxy S20 certainly feels like a big jump forward in the series, especially for photographers, and particularly with the flagship Ultra model. Rival models had previously taken a lead in low light or zooming capabilities, but the S20 Ultra fights back with not just a larger than average sensor with an ultra high res mode for the main camera, but also by squeezing in a 10 times optical zoom for the telephoto camera. These two features alone will make the S20 Ultra a very tempting phone for photographers, while the addition of 8K video grabs and a bunch of cunning software modes could seal the deal. The beefed up camera spec of the Ultra has resulted in a chunkier than normal panel on the rear, but it wasn't that noticeable when I had the phone in my pocket, and a case would of course create a more flush rear surface if you prefer. Right, that's it for now. Let me know, is the S20 the next phone, or indeed the next camera you're thinking of buying? I'm still on an old S7, so I'm thinking I might jump straight to the S20 Ultra. So, do the addition of a bigger sensor and a decent optical zoom have you thinking twice, perhaps, about getting a traditional camera? Let me know in the comments, and also if you'd like to see more phone reviews from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.